and welcome back. We're going to look at the axle today. Get your pen and paper ready because this is where the important dimensions come out. So first of all, I haven't seen this axle design anywhere else. I mentioned in the introduction. So I hope it's okay with you. Well, even if it isn't, I'm calling it the Mitchell Swing Axle because it only consists of two components. This spring here gets cut about there. We'll look at that at a later date. We're just doing the axle today, but just so that you can see the overall principle, there are essentially only two components in all the suspension. This and this, and that's it. Uh, We've got a damper. Let's call it three. Let's call it three. We've got steer. We've got a steering damper that's adjustable that turns into a remount upright, and it becomes a uh, adjustable um, suspension damper instead of a steering damper. We're just using it. Um, I tell you what. No, I won't. I won't do that yet. Okay. So now that's the first time I've said okay today. That makes it twice. I was looking back through some of my videos and I say that word quite a bit. So I'm going to try and cut back on it. This is a 17 inch pit, back, pit bike wheel uh, available on the internet. And this one is designed for a disc brake. We're not going to put a brake on it, but I picked one that was designed for a disc brake because the hub is fairly small. If it was designed for a drum brake, we'd have a bigger hub, a bigger cutout to fit the brake shoes in. Whereas with a disc brake, front wheel it's fairly tidy it's fairly small now this is the wheel as it arrives from Bligo which is the company on eBay that I got it from but it's it's not made by them it's just imported into Australia by them so any 17 inch pit bike disc brake front wheel they're all going to be pretty much the same and they're all going to be for a 12 millimeter axle. Now, our axle for the sidecar isn't 12 millimeters. It wouldn't fit in there because um, it's designed for a 12 millimeter axle, which is what you'll normally find on a pit bike. So, what we're going to do is we are going to kick those bearings out. So we'll get a drift and a tap and however else you normally get bearings out and you'll pop those bearings out. The bearing carrier just there is 37 millimeters. Now that's not going to change. So we're going to go from 12, 37 to 12 is the inside diameter of the bearing when you're looking for a bearing. So first of all, you give the internal dimension. So this is 12. Then you give the outside dimension, which is 37. And then you give the width, which I can't remember on this one. And it doesn't matter for our purposes at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick that bearing out with a 12 millimeter hole in it. And we're going to put bearing in it with a 20 millimeter hole. I'm going to give you the number of this bearing because I think they're universal. Okay, I'll set it again, that's three times. Oh, I don't know which one is the, the right number to give you, so I'm going to bring it up to the camera. So that you can see. 
Now my screen's gone off so I can't see if you can see that. So I'll read it out as well. The top one says 6904VV. It might be a W. But I'll read out the number below it. 6904. Oh, it is a VV. 6904VV CM. And then below that, it says D N for Nigel, S for sugar, 7, S for sugar, 5. So hopefully that will mean something to your bearing supply. So you want two of those, one for that side and one for that side. Okay, that's four times. Not only your bearings, but also the spacer between the bearings on this wheel a 12 millimeter. So you will need to get your machinist or yourself, if you've got a lathe, if you're doing it yourself, your spacer between the bearings will also need to be 20 millimeters in diameter. And I'll bring this nice and close so I can Hopefully it'll pick up what I'm talking about. So there we've got, you see it wiggling a little bit? That is the spacer that goes between the two bearings so that when you tighten it up, it doesn't crush the bearings together, um, ruining them. Okay, oh, fifth time. So wheel bearings, spacer. The spacer is going to be exactly the same length as the 12 mil spacer. It's just going to be with a 20 mil internal diameter. Moving on. This is the axle. This is made out of 20 millimeter. I think it's called PG, pure ground, something ground. I've been trying to think, I can't remember for the life of me. It's, it's not just a bit of rebar that you put into concrete anyway. It's proper engineering bar, but look, if you've got a lathe or you're taking it to someone with a lathe, they're gonna understand it anyway. So that's a 20 mil engineering bar. He's done that up tight, doesn't matter. On the end of that axle, you're gonna put an M14 thread. For an M14 nut and an M14 rod end. So that rod end there is locked onto that M14 thread by that M14 stainless nut. A swing axles, not surprisingly, swing. But because they are attached to that spring, they swing in an arc. I'm exaggerating it now, but they actually swing like, I'm gonna show you on the side. So actually like that. Which is why we've got a rod end rather than just a hole in the end of it or a, or a big flat washer welded on or something. It moves in an arc like that. It swings, surprisingly, this swing axle. So, M14 thread on the end of it, it goes into there. Um, my machine is to clean this up because he's a expert, wonderful, wonderful machinist man. Um, on this end, we've got a thread for an M20 nut, 14 M20. This is just a regular, I'll bring it closer. My machinist has taken a regular M20 castle nut and he's just made it smaller. He's just shaved it down a bit 
because it doesn't need to be this big. Remember, we don't want to over-engineer. There's no benefit in over-engineering. Cast iron planes don't take off the ground. We don't want an over-engineered sidecar, otherwise it's no use. Regular castle knot, reduced. And out of interest, that's 15 mil. I think the, the castellations are four mil, leaving that head there, 11 mil. But that's not critical. That is up to you and your machinist. That's what I've done. It works so far, so no problems. Okay, oh, six times. I'm gonna to have to get out of this habit. So there's your axle, 20 mil thick all the way. We're gonna want a collar. So the inside of that collar is gonna be 20 mil so that it fits on there nice and tight, that's lovely. So that when we pop that through there, it doesn't just keep going. What we will do at a later date is I will decide where this is gonna go, this collar, and weld it, the back of it, on so that when I put another collar on the front, same dimensions, and that's 20 mil internal and 30 mil external. You see why in a minute. So there's the collar for the other end. That goes on there. We put our M20 nut on. I nearly said it again then, but I didn't, so it doesn't count. And what I'll do is I will take, let's take that out a bit. Okay. So I'm happy with that now. I will weld, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it now for the camera, but I will weld there. And we'll then look back on the front and drill a hole through there for a split pin. But I'll wait until I've welded that up tight, tighten that before I drill through. And that's how the suspension works. The spring spring goes underneath like that. A spring plate, which is just big thick chunk of steel. Phone's bongy. Well, I'll take these nuts off. They fit on there lovely. These, um, these are 21 mil U-bolts. And yeah, I will drill a hole into this, I think it's called the fish plate. I'll drill a hole into there, and terminology changes from country to country. So if I'm, if you're thinking he doesn't even know what it's called, and um, that's because um, English and Australian, we just have different terminology, same as you do in America. It's it's okay. That'll go on there. That'll go on there, and that will squeeze the axle and hold it tight. And because we've got quite a long flat on the um, slipper spring, which would normally go that way up, but we're using it that way up. We can move that plate forwards and backwards to adjust the toe in of the axle. So if we like that, and then we slide it forward, the whole axle 
the whole front of the axle moves forward so that um, we can adjust the handling of that. Um, that's it. Yeah, that's it for the axle. I didn't make it. I can say I've got a machinist to do it. I don't have a lathe in here, I don't have space, all the skills. Um, it was very reasonably priced, I think, for what it is. It cost me $250 um, Australian. But it's a lovely piece of engineering and everything's very, very tight on it. It just works really well. Um, and fits very nicely with no play and it's just worth the money. Um, M20. M14 spacer 20mm internal 30mm external oh I'm gonna show you the oil seals grease seals two seconds I'm not turning the camera off I'm not going far these you will have noticed that the wheel as it came from China has a dust seal, rubbish seal, crap seal, whatever you want to call it. And when we kick the bearings and the spacer out of that, we are left with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that seal in there. I'm not going to push it in yet, but that seal will go in there. There'll be one on the other side as well. And that will seal up tight against that collar. So we've got bearings, we've got the collar, and it's all as well as protected as, as it was designed to be when it had a 12 mil axle and was leaving the factory. I think that is it for the axle. what it should look like. I'll be back later with chopping the spring, drilling the fish plate and mounting it to our box cradle. Take care, keep your shiny side up.